Our primary and judicial elections are fast approaching, culminating on March the 5th with early voting starting on. Can anybody tell me? February 20th. It's still there. Today we'll be featuring candidates for Chief Justice of the Arkansas Supreme Court, but first I'd like to ask Peggy Wright to say our invocation, followed by Beverly Nix, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We can start over here. Richard Rogers, Justice of Peace, District 7. Mark County Judge. Carlton Jones, Circuit Judge, Anchors, District South, running for State Supreme Mayor Jonesboro, Arkansas. Anyone else? Okay, and no big announcements today. It's too close. You can't announce today. <laughs> the uh, Chief Justice of the Arkansas Supreme Court is the administrative head of the state's high court and judiciary. To go over our rules and format, introduce our candidates, and moderate today's program, I enlist the help of an attorney. So, Katie Prescott, I'm going to turn it over to you. six years in Faulkner, Van Buren, and Searcy counties. I served on the Intermediate or Court of Appeals for two years, and I'm in my 10th year on the Arkansas Supreme Court. I um, practiced law. I did threshold law in a small community in, in Conway. That meant I did anything that walked across the threshold. I think many of you know that. So I represented um, criminals, I represented families in divorce, I represented probate matters, I did civil jury trials, and you name it. I also have administrative experience in my five years as an assistant <coughs> dean at Bowen School of Law um, and taught business law and health law. I also serve more than um, any other um, of the candidates on more judicial committees um, than anyone else. I have served on 11 judicial committees in the state. I have chaired five of them. I'm currently the chair of the Commission on Children, Youth, and Families. I am the court's liaison for technology and automation. Um, I have chaired judicial education for a number of years. 
Um, why that is important is because the administration of um, courts is really what the Chief Justice does. Um, of that, the uh, largest percentage of the budget involves the juvenile services and the juvenile administration, and that is what I already have the responsibility of. And the second largest is automation, which again is what I have the responsibility of. So I'm ready to go day one. It would be my honor to represent um, the state of Arkansas as your Chief Justice, and I'm here today to ask for your vote. Thank you. Next up, Justice Webb. <coughs> I am Barbara Webb, and I'm honored to be running for your Chief Justice of the Arkansas Supreme Court. Uh, I think three words describe me. I'm principled, I'm conservative, and I'm experienced. And when I talk about principled, I mean that I served on the Arkansas Ethics Commission early in my legal career. I went and I, I was practicing law in Little Rock, and we had a corrupt prosecutor in Saline Grant in Hot Spring County by the name of Dan Harmon and no one would run against him, no one would stand up to the man. And I asked my husband one day, why doesn't someone run against him? And he said, well, what are you doing, Barbara? So um, I stepped away from a law practice that I had. I've been a partner in a law firm in Little Rock doing commercial litigation, and I put my name out on the ballot and ran in three counties and was successful and became the elected prosecutor. And what I started doing, and I promised the voters, is I would make sure that our crimes were being enforced, our laws were being enforced, and our criminals were being uh, sent to prison. And that's what we did. We rolled up our sleeves, we went to work, we had a backlog of 4,000 felony cases when I went into office. We cleaned up the backlog, we shut down 500 meth labs, we tried jury trials, and put people away that needed to go to prison. Um, it cleaned the drugs out of our schools, it cleaned the drugs out of our neighborhoods, and it made our, the, the, that part of our state a much better and safer places, place to live. I also then um, went from there to uh, workers' comp system. The Governor Huckabee appointed me into an administrative law judge at the workers' comp system. I spent 10 years traveling the state of Arkansas trying, hearing workers' comp cases from and so I've been all over, including Delta. Um, and then from there, I became the CEO. I'm the only candidate in the race that has actually hands-on management experience of a state agency. And that's important because the Chief Justice is the head of not just the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals and the Judiciary, but oversees the Administrative Office of the Courts, which is a state agency with over 200 employees that provide resources to our courts. And I have that hands-on experience. I have hundreds of employees at workers' comp. I've managed budgets. I've worked with the legislature. I've done all the things you have to do as the Chief, uh, uh, Chief Justice. Um, I also manage three prosecutors' office in three counties. I work with three, work with three quorum courts. I work with three county judges, and so I believe I'm the one with the right experience uh, for this position. Um, and I will look forward to visiting with you. Uh, I think my time is getting short. Is it? I can't. Sorry. <laughs> yes. But um, I just want to say that I'm conservative. I think being conservative is important, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that and answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jay Martin. I'm running for Chief Justice of the Arkansas Supreme Court. Thank you so much for having us here today. I was honored to see so many elected officials, the mayor, and so many that are here, and then so many candidates and uh, community leaders coming together. It is very important. But we also have two students from Arkansas State University here. Uh, one is my nephew, Jacob Botwinick, who's in the band at ASU, and they had a great season, got to go to a bowl game, and he got to, to play in the band at the bowl game. And then his friend Evan McKeever uh, is also here, and he's a uh, want, in pre-law and wants to be a, a, an attorney. Yeah, maybe some of us attorneys could talk him out, but no, I'm kidding. But, uh, uh, and uh, now Jacob's made up his mind, but Evan hasn't. So, uh, so I, I think that's important that he's here listening and trying to make up his mind who to support. So, as you are, and honored to have you here today. I have been an attorney practicing law for 27 years in the same small law firm in downtown Little Rock. Uh, and I have, uh, since 2006, been president of that law firm. And it's a small business. We're at a chamber meeting. We're a member of the North Little Rock Chamber of Commerce, and uh, having to make payroll, having to pay associates and manage employees. And I think that's an important uh, part of what my leadership is. 
I'm also an ordained pastor, and I've been the volunteer pastor of an inner city church for, for 26 years now. And that has allowed me to be in the community working with troubled teens and families, and hopefully leading in a, in a way, too, that I think would be helpful on the, as Chief Justice of the Arkansas Supreme Court. But most importantly, uh, I think that I bring a fresh perspective uh, to, the pers to the position of Chief Justice. Our current outgoing Chief Justice was not on the Supreme Court when he became Chief Justice. And I think it's good to go in with a fresh perspective. I believe in the independence of the judiciary. I believe in the rule of law. I don't want someone when they come before the Supreme Court to wonder if because they're a Republican or a Democrat or because of socioeconomic status that they may not be heard. Uh, I want to be the people's judge, and we're going to all 75 counties, 85 county seats, and visiting with folks there. As the representative, as the ambassador for the judicial branch of government, uh, I think it's also important that I can work with other uh, state divisions of government. I was in the state legislature. Uh, I, I served as majority leader uh, in that capacity. We got a legislative package passed, signed by the governor, and then we went to all four congressional districts to share what we did. What I want to accomplish in the, legis in the judiciary as Chief Justice will require working with the state legislature. In visiting our county courthouses, I'm concerned. Uh, many are crumbling. Uh, they don't have adequate security uh, in, in their courthouses, in many of our courthouses throughout the state. I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about technology. I'm concerned that many of our courthouses still do not have uh, e-file uh, capability. And, and what the circuit clerks have is antiquated. So I want to, to champion those issues. And I also want to uh, work with our circuit judges. Y'all have an incredibly large judicial district. Our circuit judges are being spread thin. They need more resources. I was visiting with an East Arkansas judge who said, uh, we need a, a late view decision for the judiciary, so we need more uh, equality in the judiciary. So I want to work on that as well. Thank you. get into your professional roles. And I think that's what the voters meant when they talked about electing people nonpartisan. We, we don't put our personal beliefs or our, our hidden, what, where we've been in the back, uh, aside, we bring those. And I think, I think people that say they do, as far as, I mean, everyone's gonna have a personal opinion and a bias, but you have to put those aside when you're handling cases. 
and when you're handling the law. And so I agree that it is, uh, I think some of the voters are challenged by nonpartisan elections, but I think overall they can get the history of the candidates and figure out who they closely identify with. So, but again, I remind people that it, that's not gonna make the result different in the case. The case is gonna determine on the, determine, be determined on the evidence and what the jury and the judge decides. And as to your second part, I think that was probably directed at me, so I'll answer that question if I have time. Um, there was a group that did have a fundraiser. It was, uh, uh, it was advertised, but everyone was invited. And some person, I believe, from what I was told, was did send out a text associated with the invitation that did, that did try to make it look more partisan than it was supposed to be, and we, Inter we sent out disclaimers on that and said, this is not a partisan race. This Thank is a nonpartisan so race. Justice. Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm going to stand because I want to try to see the person who asked the question. And I, I also have served in elective office. Uh, I was a Democrat, conservative Democrat uh, in the legislature. And now I'm a registered independent and running uh, for this nonpartisan position. I'm running because uh, I'm really concerned about our country and about our state and the division that is there. And I think that we have to draw the line in the judiciary. We have to absolutely make sure that people know that it is not just another branch of government where there is, uh, you know, having the introduction of partisan politics. You have to have the facts and you have to apply them to the law. And if people think when they come before us that because someone's been a Republican or they've been a Democrat in the past, that they're going to get a different kind of ruling for that reason, then I think we have a major problem. Uh, you know, the, the judiciary branch is different from the other branches. That, you know, our benches are elevated not because we're special. and We wear black robes not because we're special, but because of the sacredness of the rule of law. And the rule of law has to be what governs us. And I'm running because our judiciary must remain independent. We must preserve our Constitution, our Bill of Rights. And every person who comes before our courts have to know that the judges are going to base decisions on the facts and on the law. When we review transcripts, we're not going to interject um, partisan politics into the equation. If the legislature, if it's ruled by Republicans or Democrats, if they pass a statute that is unconstitutional, we have to have the fortitude to say that it is unconstitutional. As Chief Justice, we, I will do that. We will do that. We'll lead the court in that direction. Thank you so much. Uh, and finally, yeah, I think that was a great question, Judge. And um, so nonpartisan means we cannot affiliate with either party. It means we cannot identify. I go places and voters are very frustrated and they're like, are you Republican or Democrat? And I say, I cannot answer that question. Our judicial code does not allow it. And that is the answer. And um, that means that I go, I'm running, I'm running in primary, I will go to any community event that they invite me to, and I freely do that. If there was an event that um, said it was sponsored by um, a fundraiser, Republicans for Rhonda Wood, um, I would disclaim that, I would publicly denounce that as violating the judicial code, um, um, clearly. Um, so I stand by the judicial code, that is the will of the voters. If the voters have a will differently, I will stand by the will of the voters. I'm not the policy maker. I just enforce it and follow the judicial code. Right here. Thank you very much. Your next question in the back. Uh, yes, Peggy Wright. I'm a professor at Arkansas State University in the political science department. Uh, my question would be of uh, each of you, what would be your approach or what solutions would you offer to address budgetary issues within the judiciary? Thank you very much. Our first response will come from Mr. Martin. <coughs> Uh, right now we have a grant program for counties uh, to try to upgrade security. They have to apply for those grants. Uh, I, don't, I think that's a non-negotiable. As Chief Justice, I will be at the legislature. I know how the legislature works. I served two terms there, was majority leader, got a lot of bills passed and on to the governor. Uh, to accomplish uh, what I want to accomplish as Chief Justice, we'll have to work with the legislature. We must make sure that every county courthouse in 10 counties have two county courthouses. As a matter of fact, you do. Uh, we've got to make sure that our county courthouses are secure for the people that work there, for the people that come to court. That is not something that we can ever compromise. We've got to do better. Technology as well. Uh, we're, to get the, the upgrades, the technology that we need, we're going to have to work with the legislature, we have to work with county government, so we will have to do that. 
Uh, obviously, the House of Representatives uh, can, uh, controls spending, so uh, you know to do those things, you have to work with the state legislature and county quorum courts. But uh, I, I think that your question is very good and very important. Uh, also, <coughs> those resources for circuit judges and circuit clerks will have to work uh, with the with the legislature as well. Uh, but I was visiting with a, a retired uh, judge in this area. He says. He thinks we almost need a, a Lakeview decision for the judiciary, and, and as I've said, and uh, because there are not uh, the resources statewide that many of our judges need. Uh, there is an incredible volume of cases here in this judicial district, and there are a lot of counties that the judges have to travel to, and so there are really uh, issues because of these things. So we've got to do better. And as Chief Justice, I will lead that. I will be at the legislature. I will be speaking. Uh, and hopefully working uh, to see these things accomplished. Thank you so much. Justice Wood. So um, I'm a believer in fiscal responsibility um, and from the state level, our administrative office of court, we have a $58 million budget. I'm not going to go ask the legislature for more of your tax dollars. I'm going to spend it smarter um, and that would be how I would act as Chief Justice. The court security, um, this is what happens when you're experienced. Um, we are spending that money, there's a few hundred thousand dollars that the legislature gives us. We sort of dole it out, 10,000 here, Doug knows this, 10,000 here to each county, and you can't do a whole lot with that. What my proposal would be is there is more money through national grants and federal grants is we take that limited couple hundred thousand, we hire an expert in to do a statewide study about truly, Mr. Martin's right, the deficiency statewide in the needs. We get that research and data, and then we can apply for these national grants, national nonprofits, and bring decent money and millions, easily $2 million grants into the state of Arkansas to make real security changes in our courthouse. Those are some of the solutions that I have if I could be your next Chief Justice. And finally, Justice Swift. Thank you. And again, I had managed budgets of a lot of money, a lot of personnel, and I am also a fiscal responsible uh, conservative. I actually, in workers' comp, we reduced the state budget of that agency by over a million dollars. We increased the investment income of our investment accounts by over a million dollars. We took technology, and I think that's where the court's answer to some of our problems are. We took technology, and with technology, we were able to do things more efficiently and provide more direct services to our to our crime victims. They, they, they knew when their hearings were going to be held. They knew when their cases were going to trial. They knew what was happening in the cases because we implemented our own data <coughs> management system in, in that county, those counties. So I have a proven record of one. Being a fiscal conservative, being a clean audits every time, and I think that's important as well. So I can bring my experience at the prosecutor's office and in my other positions at workers' comp as CEO. Um, and we had a major economic challenges in workers' comp, a fund that was going bankrupt. It, it, and, and so everyone told us it was impossible to fix that problem. And we went to the legislature, and I talked to the legislature and explained to them that we were going to have people that were the most uh, injured workers that could not, that, that were partly disabled and were, were needed that money to live on at, on the steps of the Capitol if they didn't address the situation, and they did. And we were the last state in the country to get rid of that fund and, and return that responsibility back to the employers. And it was a tough challenge at the legislature, but you have to take on the tough challenges to get good results and to make a real impact for the state of Arkansas. That's one of the things I would promise I would work as hard for you at the Supreme Court to address any financial issues. Thank you very much. Next question. I know there are some that are just going to shine. Um, uh, yes. Mr. Albert, I'm Roy Elbert, a retired editor. I'm glad to hear y'all talk about the independent judiciary and the need for a nonpartisan election. A few years ago, I served on an Arkansas Volt Bar Association committee called the Rapid Response Team tried to enforce with IET judicial campaign ethics. Uh, I was with uh, some distinguished judges, retired judges, a college professor, and for some reason me. Um, 
one of the things we found was that problem is not the candidates, it's outside the organizations that are highly partisan <coughs> will either support or try to destroy one candidate or another. And in the three years that that panel operated, we found there was nothing we could do about it. Even when we found a blatant case of, uh, uh, of violating the ethics, we couldn't even contact the organization responsible. And if we did, they just left it off. Uh, that, that seems to me to have invaded the, the, our judicial election. And, and I, we didn't find anything we could do about it. What do you all think? Is that still a problem today? And if so, can we do it? Thank you very much. Justice Wood. So I think um, it's important that, first of all, if a candidate for the Supreme Court of Arkansas is going to attack uh, someone running for the Supreme Court or a member of the Supreme Court, that tells me they are willing to undermine the credibility of the Supreme Court and the justice system in Arkansas. And if those tax are coming from one end, that tells me a lot about their character. And it tells me that if it's from an outside group and that justice or candidate is not willing to stand up and say that is wrong, even if it benefits me, that is wrong to make that attack on our justice system. Um, that's the strongest thing we can do. You know, as justices and candidates, we can't control that. Um, that is up to, again, the policy making and the people of Arkansas. But as candidates, we can live by example. And we can stand up, and the hardest thing to do is when it's helping you, right? <laughs> is to say, I'm going to lead by example, and I'm gonna stand up and say, even if that benefits me, it is wrong. And I care about the Supreme Court, and I care about the justice system, and I want to preserve it, and I will say that I care about it for the Supreme Court, regardless of who's Chief Justice, or regardless of who ends up in position two, um, that it matters, and let's pick candidates by their qualifications. Thank you very much. Justice Webb. Thank you. Um, and, and I agree. I think that free speech is important in this country. It's one of our constitutional <coughs> rights. It's one of our God-given rights. It's fundamental to our system. And, and I think that we have to understand that, the, that people have the right of free speech, and I think that's what your question was going to, was to outside groups and other groups that want to you know, run commercials or, or get involved in campaigns and express their opinions. And I think you're going to always have that. I think the Supreme Court has upheld that right to have free speech in elections and free assembly. So I think um, that what I did in the situation that was brought up earlier was we disclaimed it. We said this is a nonpartisan race, this is, and we would invite anyone, regardless of their party, to come to this event. So it was not intended to be as it was portrayed initially, and we did disclaim it publicly. So I felt like I met that duty, but I, you know, the, the rules of our court can't control the rules of an individual or other parties. And I understand your frustration because it does make our abilities, to, I mean, that's just the, the way, our, our constitution is based on free speech, so, and transparency, and that's what this is all about. So thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Martin. <clears throat> I understand your question, and I, I think we all see the ads you're talking about, and they're frustrated, and, and dark money is, is a term that's thrown around, and, you know, I love Arkansas and Arkansas people, and I think those ads are ineffective many times because uh, we're smarter than that, and, and we, can, we can make decisions based on uh, the character of people uh, that are running. Uh, hey, when you run for office, it is expensive and it's difficult. You, and anyone could probably say, trying to hold fundraisers and raise money, you end up spending a lot of your own money, usually is what happens uh, many times. So uh, I'm not aware of anybody uh, that has any dark money going for them in this race, and, and I'd be surprised if that happened in this race. But um, I, I think as Arkansas, we can be better. And, and we can, uh, if we do see someone who's calling something out that, uh, that is not good, then we can speak to that. I mean, there is the freedom of speech, but. Uh, I'm tired of all the division in our country. And I think it needs to stop at the at the judicial branch. 
uh, most definitely, and, and that's why I'm glad that it's nonpartisan. But uh, also, um, I was speaking. Uh, you know, there there do need, does need to be resources, uh, and for these committees, and it doesn't. You know, we are not uh, people who can speak to uh, policy. I, I'm not a policy person. I I'm a, a fiscal conservative too. And uh, I'm certainly not suggesting that somehow the judiciary can raise taxes or suggest that they're raised uh, so that we can uh, make the changes that are necessary uh, in, in our counties. But I, I think there are ways to do it without uh, seeing taxes raised and working with the legislature. I know the state legislature uh, is strapped and, and they're certainly not going to want to answer that are there, but we shouldn't have to be doling out money for courthouse security. We've got to do better than that. And I think that's where my fresh perspective could help on that and on the issues that you're discussing as well. Thank you very much. Our next question, please. Thank you. Yes. I'm Mark Mayfield, practicing attorney. I really kind of have one question, but there's a sub-part to it. Beyond the things that you, you talked about in your introduction, what things do you want to see to improve the operation of the Arkansas Supreme Court? And I'll certainly entertain anything that you might have to say about current oral argument practice versus any ideas you have on that. All right, we'll start with uh, Justice Sweat this time. Well, some of my priorities as Chief Justice, I talk about one is to enforce the Constitution because again, that is, and, then, and I believe that judges do need to stay in their lane. I don't think we should try to become a legislature or the governor, and I think we have to continue to um, maintain the separation of powers and respect the differences that were that the Constitution set out. Um, I also talk about access to justice, and I talk about we're gonna have to improve the justice system by making it more accessible. And the Access to Justice Commission, I serve as the court liaison um, now, and I'm honored to work with folks like Mark Mayfield. And we want to, we're putting kiosks in all the courthouses around the state to make sure people that can't afford lawyers or in areas that don't have enough lawyers have access to legal forms, have access to the things that they can do themselves, or at least identify when they need to go find an attorney, when they do need to go hire that attorney on something really critical and important. So, um, that's some of the things we're doing. We're doing some other things. We're, the, the other thing technology can bring. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to talk about is we had 40,000 failure to appears in district courts alone in Arkansas last year. You know, when I go to the doctor, I get a reminder about my doctor's appointments on my phone <coughs> or my where, whatever. We can do that as a court system. We can send out reminders, text messages, text messages. And that's just a simple solution. We're our, we should be able to implement that in our, our, tech, our technology. And that would help save a lot of resources. Then they don't have to go find, arrest them and get them back and double the fines and everything that happens when someone fails to appear. So I think, again, we, we can also address a shortage of court reporters that we have in the state. I've been on the court reporter uh, board. Um, we also can address a shorter shortage of court interpreters by using technology. And those are all things you can do pretty economically. So um, those are the things I'd like to do. I'm sorry I didn't get to the second part of your question. Thank you so much, Justice Well, uh, Mr. Martin. Well, thank you. And uh, absolutely, I think it's, uh, you know, we talked about some of the priorities, but there are, uh, and I know both of these ladies have worked on uh, the drug courts when they were judges, and I, I think that we've got to continue those. We have a mental health crisis in our state and in our country, and I think we're going to have to look at that and continue with our DWI courts and continue to work on those things. But I'm also concerned, you know, I'm not going to maintain the status quo in the Supreme Court, and if, if pointing things out offends justices that are there, I'm sorry. Uh, I am hearing as we travel to 85 counties that cases are not being decided fast enough. These are attorneys speaking. This isn't me making this up. We, I want to make sure that particularly after COVID that cases are moving as Chief Justice. We will do that uh, and we will address finally making sure that our circuit clerks are all able uh, to be e-file original documents which has needed to happen for a long time and the antiquated uh, material that they have and the programs they have really there's better technology that's probably even cheaper. So uh, that will be uh, priorities, but the philosophical issues are really the greatest. We've got to stand for the rule of law. We can look across our country, even our state, 
we've got to make sure that our Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the rule of law is defended. Uh, we've got to stand on that wall. And we've got to make sure that uh, our statutes are constitutional. And we've got to make sure that our, uh, our courts are independent. I want to be the people's judge. That's why we go to all the counties. The Chief Justice has an incredible opportunity to be an ambassador for the judicial branch, uh, to let people know these are their courts. The Justice Building belongs to the people. It doesn't belong uh, to any of us. Uh, it belongs to the people. They built it with their tax dollars. And so I, I want to bring that fresh perspective uh, to the judiciary. I think it's important. Thank you so much. Uh, Justice Witt. So um, I was the first candidate that the day I announced I put on my website my priorities. If you have my push card, um, then you have those priorities on there. And part of it is making the courts more citizen business friendly. There are a lot of people that are getting sort of kicked out of court or not timely because some of our rules have become just way too cumbersome. And I want to ease that process and make it more simple. Um, and so there's some other priorities on there as well. Um, there are some technology changes we can do um, for, to help victims of human trafficking. Um, I've worked the juvenile justice system for 10 years, and I'm going to continue to make that my priority. But I just have to speak to my um, colleagues here and just say, this is why experience in 18 years matters when you listen to what they've said. Um, he talks about e-filing in all the counties. We've already done that. Um, she talks about the text notifications. I don't know if the attorneys were at the bar meeting. The Chief Justice mentioned how we're already doing that in his state of the court speech at the bar meeting in June. Um, when she talks about making, you know, using technology for court reporters, I was on the committee that we did that and we approved the pilot program. I know that was before she was on the court, Justice Hudson was on the court, and we did pilot for digital court reporting and using te technology. The same thing with court reporters, I love that. We now can do court reporters and we're using that through Zoom and virtual technology. This is what experience in being the most senior justice here on the court is I already know what we've done and I know where we need to go. And so I'm telling you, I am ready day one. I will not waste your time as Chief Justice and I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. I believe we have time for one more question. Andrew Madsen, local attorney with offices here in Sharp County. Just have a question of clarification. Sharp County doesn't have original e-file. Neither does Lawrence County and multiple counties in this area. Can we hear a clarification on whether they do have original e-file or what the status of when they're going to get original e-file, please? Is that directed at, at the uh, any, of, any of the three can answer the question, but uh, just... Okay, we'll just go off the turn. It is uh, Mr. Martin's turn. I, I'm sorry, I may have uh, misunderstood Justice Wood, but I was in Lafayette County, and they're not even following there either. Uh, so I, I and I, I probably, probably, I probably misunderstood what she was saying, but uh, I know because I've been there. I am a practicing attorney in all of our counties, and I know <laughs> they don't have the technology they need. And if you're going to be on the Supreme Court and talk about your experience uh, and get up and make statements like that was made, and I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt, maybe she misspoke or, or maybe uh, there's information she has for us. But I know there's lot e file, there's a difference between the, the way the way you file, and so I'm just assuming that's what she's saying. Uh, so, and because I know Justice Wood would never say anything that would not be true. Uh, so, but to that point, uh, it's not the same throughout the counties. I know because I'm practicing law in the counties and we have to, sometimes we have to send a fax and then they stamp it and they send it back and then I have to mail something in, the original in, and so we're still doing those things. Uh, I know because I'm still doing it. I'm, I'm an attorney and I think that's where being an attorney gives a fresh perspective to the role of Chief Justice. Uh, I don't think that's a handicap. I, I felt is it presumptuous to run for Chief Justice not being on the court? That was a question I had to answer for myself. Uh, and I visited with our current Chief Justice, and I remembered that he was a, an outsider. Of course, he was a long-term circuit judge, uh, not from, too far from here. But, but he was an outsider to the court. And you need someone in the Chief Justice role who has been a practicing attorney. I've handled substantive cases, over 38 different substantive areas of the law. I've handled over 5,000 cases. That's the kind of chief justice that you need. Someone from the trenches uh, who can come in and make a difference, who's had a small business, who can make a difference. So, thank you. Thank you. Justice Wood? Yeah, 
and if, if, if I need to clarify at all, so every, we have made every county, every judicial district has the ability to e-filing. If a specific circuit clerk or court, we are a um, decentralized court system. So we have done what Mr. Martin is saying that we have to do at the Supreme Court. We have done, we have made it available, it is there and accessible. The circuit clerks are not their bosses, and so if they have elected not to like do their switch, flip their switch and do what they need to do, that is control. We have made it available, it is there, it is accessible, um, and it is in every county, every district. We had the last few ones and we got them on actually during the COVID period and because of the fact that people couldn't get to the courtrooms. There are a few county circuit clerks, and I know, and maybe this is your area, that have elected not to take that final step. But because we are a decentralized system, we can't force them to take that step. But from our branch, we have done and finished in the last year everything we can do and made it where every county can do that. Thank you. Justice Webb. Thank you. And, and I understand your frustration. Um, I think that we can have committees and we can have discussions and we can implement some changes, but if we don't get it out there, we've spent a lot of time wasting resources. We've got to make sure that these things get implemented. And I know there was a lot of resistance by some counties at, under our initial technology systems because they weren't very user friendly. And that's one thing that we are working towards and for a more user friendly. We just launched on the website um, a, a, a new link that you can, it's a lot more user friendly. You just can type in a person's name and whatever, now it still requires the court records to be there. If the court's not maintaining records or putting records in the system, you're not gonna see them. But if the court is, you can see them now by just typing in someone's name. You don't have to get court specific. So we're making it more user friendly, but uh, again, there are more things we need to do and we make, make we need to work with these, these uh, clerks if there's resistance because we need to find out what their challenges are. And the local bar associations. As Chief Justice, it would be incumbent on me to work with our local bar associations to see where the challenges are in each of our counties. And I, I would be glad to come to your county. I've traveled the state, as I mentioned before, and, and been in the courthouses, and I understand the, the restrictions and resources. I know a lot of the, um, some of the counties have library funds that might can assist them. I don't know, I know that's under the control of our local bar associations, but we make them come up with some grant money too. That's how the court is addressing some of this, is there's some of the grant money that's out there now. So, um, but I, I do think we can make a difference for people, and I do think we can bring technology to those areas that aren't getting it. And again, I think it will make a big difference for access to justice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that will conclude the question and answer portion. We'll move on to closing remarks. Um, first up will be Justice Wood. So again, thank you so much for having us here. Um, it's really been my honor. Um, I know in 18 years that um, the Chief Justice role is really a tremendous responsibility. I've worked with three Chief Justices. I've learned a lot from all three of them. It's, um, it's a tremendous responsibility, but it's a great opportunity for the state of Arkansas. Uh, it would be my deepest honor to serve you in that role. I understand the public servant. I understand the role. I understand how the court works. I understand how the judicial system works. And I'm here just asking for your vote. And I hope that I've earned it in my 18 years as a public servant for you. Thank you. Uh, next, Justice Webb. Thank you. I am a candidate in, in the race with a passion to serve, a passion for the justice system. I've spent the last 40 years of my life trying to make a real impact on people's lives, whether it was victims of crime, whether, it's, whether it was the attorneys I worked with, whether it was the judges I worked with. I've tried to make sure that we, every day we work, we work to make improvements in our judicial system. And I've had a proven record of improving our judicial system in the offices which I've held. And I also uh, feel like as your next Chief Justice, I will be guided by the words of Martin Luther King, who believed that justice delayed is justice denied. We can't have backlogs when workers come in COVID. We didn't shut down. We shut down for six, five weeks. But we kept hearing cases because we knew those people needed that money and needed that medical treatment. On the other hand, the Supreme Court, before I came on, shut down. So shut the, I mean, they did that. And the courts, so you, 
I dealt with backlogs. We can't have backlogs. It's too difficult to clean up. So I uh, appreciate your Thank love. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here today. I, I am very concerned from what we talked about today. We have circuit clerks who are not implementing what our Supreme Court's providing, and we don't even know that. That's a problem. And I will be the ambassador as Chief Justice. We will work with the counties. Uh, we will have uh, time set aside for each judicial district where we work with the circuit clerks and we hear from them. We're doing that right now listening in all 85 of our uh, county courthouses. We will continue that as Chief Justice. Uh, but if we have some program and the circuit clerks aren't, are choosing not to use it, then we have a larger problem than I realized. As your Chief Justice, we will not uh, maintain or defend the status quo. We will look for ways to make the, the Supreme Court better, to be the people's court, to make sure they understand that just like the legislative executive branch, the judicial branch isn't special. Uh, it is special because we set it aside to interpret the law, but it belongs to the people as well. And they need to know that, and regardless of who they are. Regardless if they're a Republican, a Democrat, independent, or they're just sick of politics altogether, if they come before our courts, they're going to get justice. Uh, if they are uh, rich or poor, uh, if they're a business owner or they work for a business, the janitor or the CEO, uh, we're going to base what we do on the facts and the law. As your Chief Justice, I will do that. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Mr. Martin. Uh, Andrew, I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, let's give our candidates a round.